Welcome back to another live and amplified Indie Fusion podcast. I'm your host, Tom Quiet, and we're back at it again with another amazing podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Ian Kasurik. How's it going today, man? Good. How are you? Doing really well. I'm trying to figure out what the heck this weather was doing because we were like 50 degrees last week, and now we're back in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I got to wear pants last week, and then now I'm like, it's all confusing me, man. Right, right, right. It's like... I've lived in Texas for five years and the weather here is more confusing than when I was living up in Chicago and that weather, you never knew what was going to happen. So, oh, man. but do you, I, do you like it? Do you like it in Texas? Yeah. Uh, I mean, originally when I moved here, I was planning on staying two years and then just kind of going on to the next thing for me. And then the pandemic hit and that took up the first two years. And it was like, well, I didn't really get to, Enjoy experience it. anything and then by the time year four hit it was like well shoot i'm kind of <laughs> kind of here now ain't i so yes, welcome <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll we'll stay here as long as i can and uh see what happens yes sir it sounds like a plan awesome. awesome so you're down in san marcos but you're originally from uh texas city yes sir uh what was it like growing up there for you um it was pretty cool it was um definitely unique you know if you're uh i don't know if you're a robert o'keen fan but uh you know he's he's made some songs that are specific to the gulf coast and yeah. most of those are pretty accurate nice nice how far from uh corpus christi are you um i'm a little bit more north than corpus uh it's okay. probably three hours i've been there okay. once but it was a long time ago I'm, I'm right next to galveston though okay gotcha gotcha so, I, i'm sitting here i'm like i know San Marcos is on the coast, but I didn't know if it was like way south, way north. So, oh yeah. well, Texas City's right next to Galveston. San Marcos is like right next to Austin, so it's probably it takes me about three and a half hours to get home from San Marcos. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, so, uh, you're going to school right now, correct? Yes, sir. Texas State. Uh, how's that been been I, treating I you? It. I yeah. love it. It's the coolest campus in the world. Nice, nice. Uh, balancing that school and music, how, how's that kind of been? It's uh, it's been rough, you know. Some of them, you know, when I have both of them going, it's like one kind of has to take the back seat every once okay. in a while. But it's a good problem to have, right? And how long have you been uh, pursuing music, like as a serious, either a serious hobby or a career, however you want to define it? Yeah. So, um, I started playing guitar around 16 years old and I was just doing it for fun. And then after I graduated high school, I started like writing songs and I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And then I was always scared to perform them live, you know, and then it took me until last year, last June, I started uh, hitting up open mics in Texas city. And then in August I moved here and then it's just been going crazy ever since playing a whole bunch of gigs. And so I'm a little bit, a little bit over a year of live music. Nice. And w- what, what have you learned in that year? Obviously, starting from scratch to now, you've gone mm-hmm. through a lot of learning curves and whatnot. What was like one of the biggest takeaways you've had over the last year? Um, a lot of repetition. It's all about you know getting the reps in. But mm-hmm. what helped me a lot, uh, if you can see on the hat, uh, Cheatham Street Warehouse. Uh, I've met everyone that I know up here from Kent Finley Songwriter Circle, and just sitting there playing your songs, the ones that you wrote. And everyone's just sitting there paying attention. It's like very nerve wracking, but great also because they'll come up to you after, you know, tell you, hey, man, this is cool. I think you should do this or man, that song is really great. And then you vice versa. So it's a great community. And I'd, I'd say that has the most impact on me playing live so far. Nice. So you've got a it almost feels like you've got a little bit of a Nashville um experience because that's very reminiscent of like how it works in nashville where you kind of get in and you find find your group whether it's a songwriters group or a writer's round that you just kind of happen to keep getting invited back to and you know you you kind of find your people and cut your teeth it's it's very special it's been going on for about 50 years they're Mm -hmm. celebrating their 50 year anniversary in in uh, october definitely a street fest but uh i don't know if you're familiar with randy rogers but uh, he got his start at Songwriter Circle back in the early 2000s, I think. And the community is about as strong as it's ever been now. Nice, nice. That's and great. you said they're doing a Street Fest uh, next month? 
Yes, sir. October 20th. I believe it's sold out already, but uh, Parker McCollum's playing there, Randy, Wade Bowen, Pat Green. The list just goes on and on and on. All right. So I'm getting to see Wade Bowen in November. I'm I'm excited. Sure. To, I, I haven't seen him perform in a really long time, so I'm excited to get to see him perform. So, yes, Where are you seeing him at? Uh, at this music festival up in uh, Granbury called Lost in Texas. I got you. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, man. It, yeah, it's it's got a really cool lineup of. I know some of the artists, but a lot mm -hmm. of them are like just not ju like independent uh, Texas artists that I haven't quite had a chance to cross path paths with yet. But you. you know, I, I'm excited to check it out. So that'll be cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over this last year, um, who have you been listening to as far as like? musically as you kind of try and figure out what kind of musician you want to be yes sir um i'm a big stevie ray guy so i've been listening to them forever but i'm also trying to figure out how to combine texas country with that because you know i grew up on randy rogers and stuff but uh, you know trying to find my own sound here i've been listening to a lot a lot of uh william Clark green mm -hmm. that rose queen album is phenomenal i think it does a great job of mixing the some of the hard rock stuff but digestible to be texas country mm. um hayes carl my dad went to open mics with him at the old quarter so his music's been a part of my life and he does the same thing he uh mixes rock with it a little bit um and then limestone kid that's like one of my favorite texas country albums yeah but like yes yeah, it's, it's just great great sound nice. so i've been those have, have been heavily in rotation for sure and have you found that it's been heavily influencing your writing or, or um, is it just kind of stuff that you enjoy listening to? A little bit of both. It started out as just like the sonics of it. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this is the sound I like. And then, you know, the more I listen to the words, I'll miss, I'll miss hear something. Like, I'm like, man, that'd be cool if you said this. And then I'll write the line down and then it'll kind of influence my songwriting like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Nice. Uh, so you do have a, even though you're a year in, you do have an acoustic song out. It was released, what, back in April, May, some, somewhere uh, in that ballpark? May 17th. Yeah. So, uh, w w what's the story behind the song? All right, man. It's funny. I was, I played a show in Texas City last Saturday and I was mm -hmm. like, man, I'm going to address the rumor because, you know, a lot of girls think it's about them. It started off about one girl, uh, the first line. Uh, moving on, doing my own thing, just trying to get over you. And then like, kind of like stop being about her. And then I was like, man, this song's pretty cool. So it stopped being about her. It started just being about the situation itself. Yeah. So it kind of loses its magic when I say it like that, but I don't know. It's better than one girl thinking it's really about her. <laughs> Honestly, you need to just start. So anytime somebody, especially back home goes, that song's about me. Just maybe. Sure. <laughs> maybe i'll just feed into it yeah that, like that's it. what i would do because it's like obviously you're still really tied into your hometown and so writing mm -hmm. a song like this comes with some risks like you obviously had to uh kind of expect that somebody may <laughs> be like hey is that song about me you know but Absolutely. at the end of the day just kind of lean into it and yeah. they're either going to hate you for it or they're going to respect <laughs> you for it so I'll definitely take the advice. At least I'll yeah. be talked about. <laughs> right. 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 And so what was it about this song that a, you wanted to have this, like the first physical represent representation of you online, but also why'd you do it acoustically? I got you. So, um, number one, the reason I picked it first is because, you know, I was showing my dad a whole bunch of songs and he, mm -hmm. he's always been into music and he kind of pushed me to do music my whole life. And uh, I played him that song. He's like, it was, it was the only reaction I heard out of the batch of songs. He goes, you, you got something there. You know, that's yeah. my favorite one. Yeah. It's like, all right. And um, the reason I did it acoustic is because I've just been playing it that way for a while. And it's very comfortable. But I'm also like actively looking for a band right now. Okay. And, and I was just like, man, I'm, I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting for all the right opportunity or, you know, everything to be perfect. And I'm like, nothing's going to be perfect. Just release something, see if it gets traction and just keep going. Yeah. So that, that, I, that was kind of the reason I was like, just figure it out. Fair. Very fair. And, you know, it, it, it's a good first song out there. And obviously 
you, you're not letting like you're not letting the big vision um hinder your current situation where it's like you're pursuing music and you obviously got to get music out but you want to have a full band so it's like okay i'm still going to figure out how to get music out but still work towards that full band yeah I was, if, good oh, sorry i was um i was stuck with that for a while i was like man big picture you know looking back on all my favorite bands albums like the first three you know like first one sometimes i nail it and the third one it's like really good and i was trying to make something like the third one i'm like well it can't be the third one if i don't have anything out yeah. so finally i just kind of it's like man i'm wasting time just because that that song you were the one about five years old and it took me four years to kind of realize just put it out you know right. you'll get you'll get better things will evolve but you got to start yeah so, so I, I, I realized yeah, for sure. I, I just realized something as I have your Spotify page open. Mm -hmm. One of your pictures on here is you drinking a generic Lone Star. Like, because <laughs> you like cross, or had somebody Photoshop out the logo or whatever. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, he's drinking a Lone Star without the Lone Star logo. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I was all I was all for keeping it. And the guy who edited it's like, trust me, I'm just going to edit it out. Everyone's, everyone knows what it is. I'm yeah. Like, all right. All right. I'll trust you. Yeah, because like I mean, Lone Star is one of those cans where it's a very distinct design. Mm -hmm. So, That's whereas true. like Bud Light, it kind of blends in. Yeah. It could be a Pepsi. It could be a whole mm -hmm. bunch of different things. So yeah, it's super simplistic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. so now that you have this song out, where where are you kind of at creatively right now? Are you looking at doing more acoustic stuff, or are you just kind of focusing on it on school? Um, I'm recording stuff right now. Uh. Niles from Shaker Hems is producing some stuff for me, and uh, we're, we're recording at the uh, at a house studio. Uh, I forget his last name, and I, I should remember it, but it's Sam. He used to be in a band called the Beatnik Bandits, hmm. and um, he's engineering everything for me. I think we're going in tomorrow actually to do like the final mixing and mastering, and then we're gonna I'm gonna have a single out pretty soon. Unironically, it's called Back Home. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, sir. Nice. It's gonna be full band stuff. Okay, cool, yes, cool, sir. cool. It, do you obviously that's still in the works? Do you have like a target date that you'd like to have it out by, or is um, it just kind of whenever? It's kind of whenever. I'll for sure, want it out probably around October, mm -hmm. maybe the next month. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but yeah, I want it out like before December for sure. For sure. And then I'm gonna try to have another single, hopefully in January, and nice. then just figure it out from there. Nice. How much uh, time do you have left in school? Or um, I'm supposed to graduate in May. Okay. I'll have two. I'll have two classes next semester, and then I'll be done. Gotcha. So you, you're just kind of priming for once you graduate, and then just, just kind of give it the full go. Exactly. Nice. You know, my dad's like, "I'm only going to support you for so long." You know. Fair. He's like, <laughs> he, well, she has been supporting me, amazing, and yeah. especially super strong uh, in the past few years pursuing this, and he's like. You know, I'm gonna give you till a certain time. Let's let's get it rolling. Mm -hmm. right, yes, sir. Let's do it. Yeah. It's hey, I mean, from what I've seen, you're doing really well for yourself. Like, oh, I mean, you. You, you have obviously got some sort of a internet presence because I found you on Instagram. So it's like <laughs> well, like thank that, you. that that needs to be accounted for something, I guess, because it's like obviously Instagram kind of aggregates who you see and who you don't see. So so, yeah, well, I'm right. trying real hard, so I'm glad something's rolling. <laughs> nice, nice. And so, being in San Marcos, you're not. You said you're not far from Austin. That's not far from Austin, right? Yes, sir, about forty minutes around gotcha. there. Do you go into Austin to play a lot, or is it? Or do you kind of really stay on campus? Um, I've been going to New Braunfels mainly, and I got a gig nice. in Seguin tomorrow. Nice. But it's kind of hard to break into the Austin scene yeah. with with no help right now. Uh, I have some buddies that, that are playing there, but they're further along than me. They've been doing it a little longer. So I'm hoping within a year's time, I'll kind of be following their steps. Nice. I'll be down in New Braunfels in October. I'm Sweet. excited. So What days? Uh, I will be there. Hold on. I've got, sorry, my calendar is so full right now. Okay. It'll be the 16th through the 20th. Sweet. So so maybe if you're free, we could go grab a beer or something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It'll be uh I'm going they're doing a uh 
uh, music festival on the river down there. So oh, it's a nice. uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. So. You you're gonna do interviews down there? Oh yeah, Sweet. yep, yep, yep. Um, it's uh, awesome. I've done it the last two years, and so now it's kind of gotten to the point where they're like, "You're coming back, right?" And it's like, <laughs> "Yes, I'm coming back." So that's awesome. You know, um, but outside of music, obviously you got school and whatnot. What, what do you like getting into outside of music? Um, really nothing. It's just been consumed, consuming my life for the past few years. I feel kind of boring because like every time I talk about something with somebody, it's always music. <laughs> sure. But yeah, before then it was, you know, I like playing video games sometimes. Sure. It keeps me out of trouble. Sure. Um, I like playing golf. So maybe I do like doing a couple. Of, yeah. I like playing golf. Fair. I don't, what is it about golf? Like it feels like everybody I talk to plays golf to some capacity right now. And it's like, I remember when I was in high school, you were a nerd. If you were on the golf team. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> my yeah. dad made me play golf in high school. So I was Fair. one of those. Fair. And um, like, I mean, I went to school high school long before you did. So mm-hmm. like, we're talking probably a good 10, 12 year age gap there. Well, so I played, I played basketball from fifth grade all the way up to ninth. Yeah. And then they told me we had early morning practices and I didn't feel like running. So I'm yeah. like, all right, golf isn't too bad, you know? Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> but no, it's, it's peaceful out there, like just being out there. Mm-hmm. And when you're hitting bad shots, it's not. But it, it, for me, it's helped me kind of get a hold of some anger issues yeah. or, you know, kind of learning how to manage my emotions better. Fair. Do you find do you find that um, playing golf kind of helps your music, like, or is it just kind of one or the other? Um, I don't know. I think I don't really think about music when I'm out there, so maybe that's my getaway. That's just peaceful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously, obviously, you'd mentioned that you're kind of in the process of recording right now. Where are you at, like, writing-wise? Are you kind of always writing, or do you, like, go through phases of, like, okay, I'm inspired, I'm not inspired? Mm -hmm. Um, I've always, like, like, I watch a bunch of documentaries about my favorite songwriters, and, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'll go through phases and stuff, and I'll try to, like, model myself after what they do, then I'm like, eh, it's just, if something strikes, it strikes. Mm -hmm. Like, a couple weeks ago or last month, there was, like, three songs I, like, wrote back-to-back that I'm still trying to finish up I'm like man you know it's pretty cool and then the past two or three weeks i've been writing like lines down like i'm, I'm especially driving from texas city to san marcus yeah. last weekend I had a lot of music i've been listening to and miss hearing i'm like Ooh, that'd be cool if i did this that'd be cool if i did that so it just kind of comes in and out of waves it's all uh, like the analogy um the teachers used to say like when you're writing essays on the test like, don't look up, you know, nothing's going to fall out on paper. I'm like, well, that's exactly how I wrote all my songs. It just right. kinda, it just fell down in my lap. Right. That's hey, some, sometimes that's just how it is. You know, that's I've it. had several similar situations where it's like, oh, that, that, that's what I need right there. You know, <laughs> yeah. so no, it's that's cool. It works. Right, right, right. Uh, so where are you at kind of show wise right now? Are you playing while you're in school or do you focus more on writing and recording when you're in school um i just try to do it all as much as i can you know um i've i've left my school schedule pretty free Mm -hmm. like today i had one class that ends at 12 i don't have classes friday and then i start back up monday so i try to keep it as free as possible for as many opportunities i probably should have like a better schedule like with I'm trying to play more. I'm trying to write more, trying to record more, but I just think I'm in the early stages of the ball roll and I'm just trying to throw anything out there and see if anything sticks. Fair. That's so, fair. Uh, what are you studying in school? Uh, business management. Okay. That, yes, so that works really well with yes, uh, music. Yes, sir. My dad's like, man, you need to go get a degree. That's that'll get you a good job. And it, you know, I don't know what the world's going to do. So I'm like, what's the easiest or like most, trans you know mm-hmm. uh okay. job that'll be there it's like management and then whenever i started taking the classes i'm like oh i could use this for my own you know yep. if i start the business it's, it helps me out for sure i often tell people when they're like because every once in a while we'll get musicians that are still in high school that come on 
and they'll be like getting ready to go to college, trying to figure out what they want to study. And my go-to is always, if you don't know, but you know, music is what you want to do. Start studying marketing. Marketing oh, yeah. is a hundred percent. What every, if you don't, if you're being forced to go to school, mm -hmm. marketing, that's a hundred percent what you should be doing. I agree. So yeah. I've, I've had to take some marketing classes because it falls in the man management degree, but mm -hmm. yeah, the marketing is definitely that I've, it's stuck with me more than like accounting. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, I took one accounting class in college because I thought it was going to be a better substitute than taking like geometry or whatever the heck mm -hmm. math class I was trying to take. Cause they were like, you could take this or accounting. And I'm like, I'm going to take that accounting class just cause, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. So yeah. Yeah, I'm, was, I'm lucky I scraped by. <laughs> right. I, I think I scraped by, but that I don't quite remember to be honest with you. There's a <laughs> lot of years in college. I don't remember. So. I mean, you had fun. <laughs> yeah. At, at least I'm told I had fun. <laughs> so, oh, uh, but no, I really appreciate your time. Um, if anybody wants to check out your music or any of that fun stuff, uh, where's the best place to find you? Um, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. I, I guess that's the same thing, but yeah, just just search up my name. I know my last name is very hard to spell, <laughs> but yeah, it's just Ian Kasurik on pretty much everything. Nice. I, I'll tell you what, though, ever since I moved to Texas, I've found, I've had some of the best Polish food in general like mm -hmm. there's a there's a little town just outside of waco here where i'm at and they have a nice little polish deli and it's like yes this is yeah. what i was raised on so i'm in my happy place mm -hmm. so yeah i always say texas has the best food you know because yeah the the czechs germans polish that kind of descent and the mexicans just came together and just the breakfast food is amazing breakfast oh, yeah. tacos kolaches just everything is amazing yeah. I went to my first rodeo not too long ago um, and my, I was with one of my uh, co-workers and he's like, Hey man, I'm going to go get a, a sausage wrap. You want one? And I'm like, yeah, you know, cause I figured it was eat, bratwurst or it was going to be Polish. It was going to be something that I was going to eat. And he hands me the Polish sausage and it's wrapped in a tortilla. And I'm like, <laughs> I was not expecting the tortilla, but you know what? I'm not bad at it. So put, put some mustard on there. Yep. It's real good. Oh yeah, a one hundred percent. I was just that was like, I don't know what my life is right now, but I'm kind of enjoying it. So, what rodeo was it? Uh, it was called the West Rodeo. Oh, okay, sweet. yeah, and it was in uh, West Texas. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the like city. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the funny thing is everybody's like, "Oh, check stop for this," and I'm like, uh, one of my buddies was like, "No, you got to go to this place back off the beaten path over here. That's the best place to go." <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I love it. So it always is <laughs> right. I, I've, I've walked into more of the, more of the sketchiest looking places ever since I moved to Texas and I'm mm -hmm. not worried about it. It's like, ain't nothing going to happen. No. Like it, you're going to get some good food is what you're about to do. So I feel like for the most part, everyone's just here to have a good time. Right. I agree. So. I a hundred percent agree, but, um, really appreciate your time. It's That's been it. a good chatting with you and we'll definitely have to reconvene. Uh, next month down in New Braunfels or, you know, where, wherever it may be. And yeah, man, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, thank you everybody for tuning in and we will catch y'all later.